In this video I'll be building a partition wall in our home. The wall build starts at around this time on screen now and if you want to skip straight to that then go for it but before getting started with that there were some floor repair works that were needed so I'm going to show that too. But first of all I want to talk about why we're putting a wall up within this space. When we moved into the bungalow last year the previous occupants had used this space as their living room and it's a huge space measuring 7.5 by 3.6 meters or 24 foot by 12 foot and we decided to use one of the rooms that was previously a bedroom as our living room and since then this space has been sitting empty. I show and talk about this in more detail in my house tour video which is an exclusive video available only via Patreon and YouTube channel membership where you can also find videos about our entrance hall and kitchen renovations. And coming soon, there'll also be some bathroom renovation videos. So this room is a very long space. And aside from opening our own bowling alley, we were all out of ideas for how to use the space. Since the global pandemic, my fiance Ria has been moved from working in an office in the city to being a permanent home worker, meaning she needs somewhere to work from. At the moment, she's using a temporary desk we've set up in the corner of our living room. So the plan is to add a wall to divide this large space into two, creating an office space for rear slash guest bedroom, and the other half will be used as our dining room. And by the way, when our bungalow was originally built in the 1930s, there would have originally been a wall here anyway, and we're actually just reinstating it as a room. So that's the backstory, now on to actually getting it done. And at the start of the project, this is how the room looked. You'll see that we recently had the ceilings skimmed as when we moved in we had Artex ceilings which neither of us are fans of. Over here by the window the floor just didn't feel solid and I wanted to get this sorted before doing anything wall related so I peeled back the carpet to get a better look at what was going on. <laughs> So the main floor joists are running in this direction. You can see there's one running here and one along the wall there. I think what the problem is here is that whoever installed these floorboards has buttered them right up to the exterior brick wall below where the damp proof course is. So obviously those bricks are sucking up moisture and then passing that moisture through to the timber and that's why a few of these boards have totally rotten through. I made a relief cut using my circular saw down the centre of the second joist so that I could remove the floorboards. I didn't get any footage of that but I used an old blade for that because I knew I'd hit a few nails along the way. And then I could start lifting the floorboards with the crowbar. I had hoped I could get away with just replacing the floorboards in this area but as you can see the moisture had spread into the joist here too and that's badly rotten. This is the state of the floor joist when I eventually got it removed and here are a few closer pics showing woodworm damage and rot just before I tossed it on the fire. This piece of wood was light as a feather, hollow on the inside from all of the woodworm damage. Fortunately there were parts of the joists that were salvageable so I nailed on some new timber that I'd cut to the same size as the joists. I'm using some 90mm nails in my Milwaukee framing nailer to secure it. With all the rot removed I can then replace the floorboards and I'm just using any old scraps of 18mm sheet materials that I could find for this. It really doesn't matter to me what this looks like, no one is ever going to see it. With that done I'm also going to measure up the distance from the skirting board to the joists and also the distance of each joist from centre to centre so that I can secure the base plate of the wall directly to the joists through the floorboards for extra strength. I can then reinstall the carpet tack strip and reinstall the underlay and carpet. A couple of weeks have passed since I last filmed in here and we've now had all of the building materials delivered. We've got the pair of glazed doors, the insulation, framing timber, door architrave, skirting boards and plasterboard. Ria, my fiance, has also decorated the space. I can't say the vibrant pink colour is exactly to my taste but that's fine. I've decided that I'm going to build the wall on this side in relation to this beam as opposed to this side, mainly because I don't want to get that light switch moved. So the wall's going to be around here. And the only downside of that is on the other side of the room, you'll see there's a small return on the wall here, which means we're going to have a small space to fill here. You'll see here that I drilled a couple of inspection holes to try and find out what this beam was made of beyond the boxed in plasterboard and plaster, but I couldn't really figure it out, so I made this hole a little bit bigger. 
So what I think we've got here is a piece of angle bead along here and then this is all just plaster. Beyond that is about a 20 millimeter gap and then I can feel a piece of steel and I can get my finger up and round the rim. So I think it's definitely a steel RSJ up there which means that I can secure to that. I want to offset my wall framing from this face by the thickness of the plasterboard which is about 9.5 millimeters. So I'm going to scribe a line and then I can set up my laser level to that mark. I'd already designed the frame for what I wanted to build in SketchUp and the first part I wanted to cut is the base plate for the wall using the dimensions from that drawing. The timber I'm using here is 3x2 construction timber or CLS timber. It actually measures 63 by 38 millimeters and 2.4 meters in length. And I'm making all the cuts with my circular saw with a speed square guiding the cut. I can then offer that up to my laser line, which is difficult to see in this shot, but it is there. This is going to help me keep the two separate wall frames that I'll be building either side of the door opening in line with each other. And here I'm marking up where the floor joist is so I know where to add a fixing. And I'm screwing right through the carpet here. I know I'll probably get some hate for not cutting the carpet away first, but honestly, I didn't see any good reason to do that. As the screws are going right through into the joists, this is going to be plenty secure enough. And in a few years, when the time comes to replace the carpet, I can just cut it away then and lay the new carpet up to the new wall. Next, I can get my top plate fitted, lined up to the laser again, and no cuts were made here, so I'm using a 2.4 meter length for this. I asked Rhea to help hold this in place while I got the first fixing in and to fix to the steel I found a great video by Charlie White which explained how to fix to an RSJ using ordinary screws. I'll link to the video below where he explains that by using a screw size half a millimeter bigger in diameter than the pilot hole drilled into the steel you can get a really solid fixing with ordinary screws which self tap into the steel. In his video he manually screws them in by hand using a screwdriver which is probably the best option but I found that using an impact driver and just driving the screws in bit by bit worked well for me. Great tip and a great channel full of DIY tips, I'll link to it in the description box below, please do check it out. Next I can measure up for my first stud and each of the studs had to be measured and cut separately as the floor sags in the middle of this room by about 15mm at its lowest point and I wanted to get a nice snug fit. This first one was a bit too tight so I ended up trimming it down but before I did that I can mark up where the skirting board is and make a cut out with the jigsaw. Before I add any screws to secure this to the wall I decided to buy one of these stud finder devices and you can't use a stud finder in a video without making the classic joke. Found one. This device also detects electricity and metal within a wall and because there's a light switch and a socket on this wall this helped me to determine where the cables were as I obviously didn't want to drill through any electrical cables. I got this one on Amazon, it's pretty cheap and I'll link to it in the description box below. When I offered up a spirit level I found that I'd need to shim the wall a bit at the top as the wall that the stud was going to be fixed to wasn't plumb. So I'm using some packers here to shim the top out a little bit. And then I can use my SDS drill to drill through the wood into the wall. I add a raw plug and then use a screw to hammer it through into the brick. And then I can secure with 80mm screws. Now that my first stud is plumb, I can use some spacers to equally space each stud apart. So I'm cutting two spacers. And I'm paying special attention to get everything flush so that when I secure the plasterboard later, there won't be any high spots. I'm going to use 90mm nails in my framing nailer to secure the studs. And I'm toenailing them in, in other words, shooting them in at an angle at both the bottom and the top. At this point, I hadn't set the depth of my nails properly on the nail gun, so these ones had to be hammered in all of the way by hand. And then I adjusted the nailer to fire them in further. Then I can move on to the next stud using the spacers again.
When I got to installing the last stud, I wanted to make sure it was flush with the bottom plate and it was coming up a little short here, so I'm using a shim next to the spacers so that when the nails are fired in, it doesn't move out of place with the impact of the nails going in. I offered up a spirit level just to check it was plumb and it looked good. I can then reuse the spacers as noggins in between the studs to make the wall more rigid and also give more places to secure the plasterboard to later. And I'm spacing these about 1200 millimeters from the top and bottom plates because that's the length of the insulation slabs that I'll be using later. I can then set up the laser level to the opposite side of the room and start framing out that side in the same way again. But this time I'm not using the measurements from my drawing as I wanted to make sure I get the size of the opening as close as possible to the size of the doors that I'll be fitting later. So I did lots of careful measuring before cutting and framing this part of the wall. I can then measure the opening and frame out the part above the door. It just so happened that I had enough space here to squeeze in another piece of the CLS timber horizontally here, rather than cutting small pieces to go in upright, which was the original plan. I drove in a few long screws to secure everything in place. And with the framing done, I could start adding the plasterboard. That was just a case of measuring up each wall and then scoring the board with the utility knife and straight edge, snapping it open, then cutting through the bottom and snapping that off. I also needed to cut a little bit off the width of these boards and I needed to cut away some of the boards to fit around the skirting boards. And then I can fix the boards in place using drywall screws. Here I'm marking up the position of the studs as I want to fix the board to all the studs and the noggins with plenty of screws. And I'm sinking each screw just beneath the face of the board so that I can fill these holes later on without the screws sticking out. I'm not going to be getting this wall plastered by the way, I'm just going to be taping and filling. In the UK it's common to skim plaster all internal walls. In the US taping and filling I believe is the norm. I don't see any good reason to get this wall skim plastered but I can think of one good reason why not to and that's cost. And I'm not good enough at plastering to have a go at it myself. The insulation I'm using for the walls is 50mm rock wall sound slab. I chose this because it works great acoustically and thermally and it's relatively inexpensive and I know it's good because I've used it a lot in the past like when I insulated the ceiling and walls of my workshop for example. Usually I cut it to size using a woodworking handsaw and that works really well but I'm just going to use what I have to hand which is my utility knife. I like to cut it about 10mm bigger than the space that I'm filling just to get a nice tight friction fit. And then I can add plasterboard to the other side. And finally I can add the board above the door and I didn't have enough plasterboard to do this in one piece so I'm going to join two pieces together and it'll be another gap to fill later on. Whenever I want to shave off a little bit from the edge of plasterboard I just use my knife to scrape some away. That works great. So that's the wall framed and boarded. This is only the second wall I've ever built. The first was the one inside my workshop and it's always surprising just how quickly they go up. The framing here took me about half a day, the insulating and plasterboarding took a couple of hours, so it took less than a day in total. Instead of building the wall as I did in this video, another option would have been to pre-assemble the frames on the floor and then lift them up and secure them to the wall, ceiling and floor. And I think that could be a better option in some situations, but the reason I chose to do as I did it in this video is because of the sag in the floor and each stud needing to be cut at a different height to the next. But I'm not an expert on this stuff. This isn't the sort of work that I normally do. And as always, I'm open to learning from your suggestions. So if you've got any, please leave them in the comments section below so that I and others can learn too. In the next video, I'll be making the door lining and stops 
installing French doors, architrave and skirting, a bit of decorating and then a final reveal of the two finished rooms. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do a one-off donation via PayPal or sign up for YouTube channel membership or Patreon where you can get early access to my videos, exclusive content, including the videos that I mentioned earlier, free plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.